Gratitude. The verse we just sang comes from a song. A song that we chant in this week's Torah portion, Parshat B'Shalach. The Israelite people just witnessed incredible signs and wonders, with the magnitude of which took this oppressed people, me'avdut l'cheirut, from subservience to freedom. What a splendid and festive occasion when the sea parted for an entire nation and then came crashing down on their oppressors. What a joyous day. What a joyous life. Hallelujah. But it was just a moment. The hardships of life returned in an instant. Vayilono ha'am al Moshe ma nishteh. And the people complained against Moshe, saying, what shall we drink? They wonder how they'll even survive. The very next story, after the Song of the Sea, the people are crying out to Moshe with a claim against God coming from fear and uncertainty. We can relate to this today in our own lives. We are living in a time and a place where we, the Jewish people, are alive and strong. After generations of persecution, hardship, and hatred, we are still here, impacting the world in significant ways. This fact makes me feel so close to you, God. What a miracle. Hallelujah. But then, God, I read another, about another anti-Semitic assault in Brooklyn, and for the first time in my life, I consider not wearing my kippah on the subway as I take my daughter to daycare out of safety concerns. How could you let this intolerance happen? How could you let this be? That day, I felt so far away from you, God. Why do you hide your face? Life is filled with these contrary moments, ones where we feel incredibly attached to something larger than ourselves so close to God, and others where isolation, pain, and despair cause us to question God's love and even God's presence at all. So, what reconciles this polarity? Or are we destined, much like the Israelites in our Parsha, to live a frenetic life of bouncing back and forth between joy and pain, light and and darkness, closeness to God, and isolation. Jewish tradition does indeed provide us with practices to remedy this existential frailty and uncertainty. If not, I wouldn't be talking about this today. We see a glimmer of this message through a rabbinic teaching that appears in the Passover Haggadah. The Torah describes the miracle of the sea as being a manifestation of God's awesome power. Vayar Yisrael et hayad hagadola. And the Israelites saw the great hand of God. Rabbi Yosei Haglili teaches that God's hand also consists of fingers, which they themselves emanate power and miraculous wonders into the world. According to some rabbinic calculus with the hands and the fingers, 
they eventually get to 50 miracles that surround the moment at the sea. This is a powerful message. For he teaches us that certainly we must be aware of God's hand in our lives, the grandiose wonders, such as childbirth, the love between friends and family, but we must also be aware of God's fingers in the world. Etzba Elohim, the small glimmers of God's presence which manifest on a daily basis. Rambam, Maimonides, writes in his commentary that it is through great and famous miracles that the people recognize the hidden miracles, which are the foundation of the whole Torah, indeed, the whole world. A common question is that if God is all-powerful, why wasn't there just one miracle to take the Israelites out of Egypt, if that was the ultimate goal? Why the repetition of numerous giant miracles? We learn from the Rambam that the purpose of the large miracles and the Torah's emphasis on them is really to teach us to recognize that wonders do in fact exist, even on a small scale. The fingers always accompany the hand. And if we attune ourselves to the divine frequency, we can stand in radical amazement. You know I couldn't get away without quoting Heschel at least once. <laughs> For me, the greatest evidence that we have the capacity to stand in radical amazement is what I see in my children. Magda Rose, my two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and I love going to the grocery store together. One day, a while back, we were passing the produce section, and she was absolutely amazed by the immense selection of the apple varieties, particularly, the, particularly their colors. She pointed to the Granny Smiths with excitement. Those are green. And to the Red Delicious with enthusiasm. Those are red. And with absolute bewilderment, she looked at the Honeycrisp. Said, those are red and yellow. <laughs> I saw this look of awe and amazement in her eyes. And I thought to myself, you know, it is quite incredible that all these apples grown throughout the world are here for me at this moment and at this place. What a blessing. What a small wonder. Hallelujah. There is a midrash which relates a story of a young boy and his awe of nature. It relates that as the Israelites entered the promised land, a child who had been born in the wilderness of Sinai, looked in amazement at all the plants they were passing, fields of wheat, vineyards, vegetables, but most of all, the trees. He had spent his whole life in the desert and could not understand what he was seeing. So he turned to his mother and asked, what's all this stuff growing out of the earth? His mother, remembering back to her youth in Egypt, told him about the fruits and vegetables but he was still fascinated, particularly by the trees. How did they get there, he wanted to know. His mother explained, from a small seed, as tiny as a grain of sand, that's planted in the soil, with water, sunshine, and air, it grows into all that you see. Oh, mother, exclaimed the boy, don't tell me stories. The splitting of the sea I've seen. Manna from heaven I've tasted. Water from a rock I can understand. But how can a big tree grow out of a tiny seed? This, this must be a miracle. By Abraham Joshua Heschel writes that as civilization advances, the sense of wonder declines. Such decline is an alarming symptom of our state of mind. He says that humanity will not perish from a want of information, but only for a want of appreciation. The beginning of our happiness lies in the understanding that life without wonder is not worth living. What we lack is not a will to believe, but a will to wonder. 
Perhaps our Torah portion is teaching us that if the only times we feel immense gratitude and divine awareness is when our lives are dramatically touched by the hand of God, then when we are struck with incredible loss or need, we feel the absence in an equally dramatic way. On the other hand, pun intended, <laughs> when we attune our senses to the small wonders and the moments in which we can feel awe and connect to something deeper every day, we can develop a constancy, a perspective of gratitude that can ride the waves of both tremendous loss and gain and keep us in relationship with our larger narrative in the world, with the divine. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, in his Hasidic teachings, explains that there exists in this physical world seichel b'chol davar, divine wisdom and beauty in everything we experience with our senses. He describes existence as being a divine symphony in which every element of reality is playing its part. Indeed, each blade of grass, he teaches, has its own nigun, its own melody. When we attune our senses to the small miracles, the fingers of God that exist in our daily lives, we can follow a path of, the path of a life of immense meaning. Shiratayam, the song of the sea, is the only song of gratitude sung by the Israelites throughout their travels to the promised land. Perhaps if there is more singing, more appreciation of the small miracles around them, it would have been a much more pleasant and joyful journey. <laughs> oh, The acknowledgement and gratitude for the power and depth of God in this world and the wonders that we see every day, Vayahi li lishua, they will be for us a salvation. It will imbue our lives with a full spirit. I am truly grateful for the little and not so little wonders that many of you here have contributed to my life. And with the sense of awe and connection that I feel right now, I recite the Kaddish de Rabbanan. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei Rabba v'yalma divra kirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayei chon uv'yomei chon uv'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala uv'zman kariv v'imru amen yehei shemei Rabba mevarach le'olam ulamei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnasei Vit hadar vit alev vit halal shemei de kudsha berichu leila min kol berchata veshirata tush berchata vanechamata de amiron vialmav imru amen al Yisrael vial rabbanan vial talmidehon vial kol talmide talmidehon vial kol man dioskin biaraita di viatra hadain vidi bechol atar v'atar yehei lahon lahon shalom araba. China v'chista v'rachamin v'chayin arichin u'mezona revicha u'forkana min kodam avohon di v'shmaya v'imru amen. Yehei shlomo rabba min shmaya v'chayim tovim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mramav hu b'rachamav y'ase shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen.
Thank you.